Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Stellaris. My name is Tom, and this is episode number one. Welcome to Stellaris. This is my first introduction to a Paradox game. I've heard that these games are quite complicated to learn. And so, yeah, I'm going to give you my first impressions of Stellaris for the very first time. And let's see how it goes, guys. Of course, no spoilers, please. No spoilers. If I do ask for help um, to learn some kind of functionality or mechanic, I will ask that and then feel free to, to, uh, to help me out. But yeah, guys, let's see what Stellaris is all about. I think I should have this screen up here, um, Stellaris Wiki. So I, I have Stellaris Wiki here. Uh, let's see. Let's see if it switches over. So it should, it should switch over. And um, let's take a look at what Stellaris is all about. It says Stellaris is a sci-fi grand strategy game set 200 years into the future. So, so yeah, this is my first grand strategy game, and the reason I chose Solaris is because it's set in space, and I absolutely love um, space. So, um, yeah, good morning, Ian. Good morning, Marietta. Yeah, an understatement, says Ian. Oh, my goodness. I don't know what I'm getting myself into here, guys, but we're, we're going to give it a go. Um, this game is developed by Paradox studio and also published by paradox or paradox interactive so uh yeah they have um a, a getting started page here like a beginner's guide and uh so if, if i need help to learn how to play this game um i can resort to this guide here and then also the viewers on the live stream yeah so uh, let me switch back here to to the game. And uh, Ian says there is a shallow end of pool, but you can drive dive very deep. OK. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, this game looks really exciting. So if you want to see the continuation of Stellaris on this channel, hit that like button. And we'll see, we'll see how this goes, guys. We'll, we'll see how people react to me playing Stellaris for the very first time, a grand strategy game. And um, yeah, so hit that like button if you want to see more of Stellaris. The main game on this channel is um, satisfactory, so that will take priority over everything else here on the channel. And uh, but we'll, we'll play Stellaris when we get time. So, before we get started, guys, what DLCs do I have? Well, you know, if you know anything about me, I'm a sucker for buying anything that's really pretty. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I bought all the DLCs for this game. Now, um, I did some research, and every, you know what I found was you need to start with the base game, vanilla game, to, for, for new players. And I almost did that. I almost did that. And but I decided to go with all the DLCs. I, I did check a, a tier list and there was a, quite a few DLCs that um, were on the S the S tier list for beginners. So I, I grabbed those and I, yeah, I want to get the full Stellaris experience, guys. I want to get the full Stellaris experience. And uh, hopefully that doesn't bite me in the rear end here. <laughs> I, I'm really nervous to play this game. So, yeah, the goal is just to learn how to play this game. There is, guys, there's going to be a lot of mistakes made. A lot of mistakes, a lot of in inefficiencies. Um, and I'm sure you guys are all going to be cringing, but this first playthrough is learning how to play Stellaris. That's it. It's trying to understand the mechanics 
of Stellaris and a grand strategy game. The simple game is simple. Yeah. Um, no, I, 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 I made it more difficult, Ian, and I got all the, all of the DLCs with the 10% discount. So, um, I made it even more difficult for me, which I like. <laughs> so, yeah, here we go, guys. We're going to, we're, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna dive deep into Stellaris. Let's see how far we get today. Uh, so I'm gonna hit a new game here. It looks like there is multiplayer and co cooperative, which is good to know. It, it's okay. It's in a beta stage right now. Uh, okay, so it's in beta, so that's in multiplayer. So this could definitely be a playthrough with some viewers on here in the future if this series does take off on the channel. But Ian says, um, remember, this is not linear like Satisfactory. There are many paths to take. Oh, that is that that sounds great, Ian. I like that. I like that there's many paths. So. All right, guys, let's get started. I mean, look how beautiful this wall's wallpaper is. This is so beautiful. I, I, I'm so excited about this game. Uh, but uh, let's hit the new game. Let's hit the new game and let's explore the interface together, guys. Where did, I'm going to take my time here and we're going to explore the interface. There's a lot of things I'm not going to understand, but we're going to take our time through this playthrough. Guys, if you want to see the series continue on this channel, hit that like button so I may know that you guys like this playthrough. We'll see how everyone reacts to it. But again, I have all of the D DLCs over here. Yes. And um, wow, what do we have here? Well, I went to a new game and I'm presented with this um, this um, box here. United Nations of Earth. Okay and uh representative democracy Ooh, i like that democratic yeah holds an election every 10 years to select a new ruler empire effect faction approval 10 percent government reform and policy cooldowns when a new ruler is elected um wow this is a lot of information that you know, I don't know what this means. Empire effects per skill level. Unity. What's unity, guys? What's unity? Unity is from factions. Plus two. Edict fun. Plus five. Wow. What is all of this, guys? This is not Beacon of Liberty. Um, idealistic Foundation. Xenophile. Oh, yeah. Xenophile. That's great. Tool tips rule this game. Okay, Ian. Ian says the United Nations of Earth is a is a good beginner. Okay. So United Nations is a good beginner's choice. You know you know how humans think. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I we'll go we'll go with the humans and yeah, over here there's select empire and there's a bunch of empires I can select here. And yeah, look at all these crazy empires. This is nuts, guys. This is, wow. The Blorg commonality. Um, wow, that thing looks weird. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so we'll just go with United Nations of Earth and we can go in here and edit this, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go in here. I, I just want to select United Nations of Earth. We have a continental world, which is called Earth, which is great. And then we have the prosperous unification. I'm not sure what this is all about. No idea. The myriad of human nations ooh, that constitute their interstellar governance government are desperate yet united in purpose these bipedal 
mammals have developed a society that encourage and even thrives on individual freedoms and cultural differences. As a result, humans tend to integrate well with alien populations. Okay. So, uh, yeah, humans, we got adaptive plus 10% hospitality, pop growth from immigration, 15 resettlement, negative 25. Uh, wasteful pop consumer goods upkeep 10 percent well i see it's in red so it must be pretty bad if it's in red it's probably bad so okay so it looks like the humans what are these things what are these things are, are is this saying that humans are adaptive nomadic and wasteful okay so we're wasteful and because we're wasteful, we our our consumer goods upkeeps is plus ten percent. Okay. Earth, Earth, or the human the humans are good learning. Okay, yeah, we'll we'll go with United Nations of Earth, guys. Hey Nara, welcome to live stream. Marietta. Um, what do you think, Marietta? We're, we're going to go with the United Nations of Earth, and I'm kind of going through all of these things here. So, we are democratic, and I, I just don't know what all this is here, but... Oh boy, here we go. I'm so nervous. Oh, I hope I can make it through this, guys. <laughs> Okay, Marietta says I should look at other ones first. Well, which ones, Marietta? Which ones? There is the Commonwealth of Man. It's a military dictatorship. Ooh. That sounds... Um, that sounds terrible. That, that sounds like um, North Korea. <laughs> Marietta's never played. Okay. Classic Space Empire, says Ian. All right. Uh, we have the Federation. What are these guys? Wow, those guys look really weird. The Blooms of Gaia. Gaia. Wow. Vor Technocracy. The Kill cooperative cooperative okay <laughs> all these look so weird guys let's just stick with humans okay well I, nara i have zero experience with stellaris so i need to go with the easiest path and it seems like united nations of earth is the best path forward for this so if you are new, st if you guys are new to Stellaris, you can uh, play along with me if you like. I have all of the uh, DLCs over here to the right, so I would imagine if you were to get Stellaris, you would just play the base game. And I, I thought about just playing the base game, just in case that any new viewers here that want to try Stellaris could play play along with me. But I, I went ahead and got all the DLCs. And yeah, I want to experience Stellaris with all these DLCs. Nara says, don't worry, you may play a couple streams, then restart. Well, we're, we'll find out, Nara. That's the goal is not to restart here. The goal is not to restart, but but we'll find out. OK, Ian says, just play press press next. Ian, what's the rush? Ian, what's the rush? We're not rushing here. <laughs> All right, Ian says, uh, "Let's let's press start." Okay. Yeah, um, Nara, I'm very stubborn about restarting. I don't want to. I the goal is not to restart. The goal is not to restart. So if we have to restart, we will. Okay, we will. But the goal is not to. Ian says, "Tom, hit the play button." Okay, Ian, patience. First stream 
Start screen only. Yes. Look, guys, put yourself in my shoes. This is very overwhelming to me. This is very overwhelming to me. I mean, all of this is just overwhelming. I, I don't know what's going on here. So please be patient with me. This is <laughs> this is information overload, information overload. And then so anyways, guys, let's go select. <laughs> And uh, so we're on the game details here. And um, guys, I, I, I'm going to leave this standard. I, I don't want to change any of this here. I, is there anything I should change in here that I should consider? I'll, I'll take your tip. I may. Yeah, I'll, I will consider your tip. Yanko, welcome, Yanko. Thank you for stopping by, Yanko. Ian says no. Yanko, have you played Stellaris? Apparently Ian has experience in Stellaris. But Yanko, do you have experience in Stellaris? This is a grand strategy game. Okay, Yanko, Yanko and Marietta has they they have no experience in this game. So Guys, uh, Yanko, I have all of the DLCs for Stellaris. If you if you're interested in playing along, you would probably just buy the base game and play without the DLCs. But I went ahead and got all the DLCs to experience this. So regardless, I'm gonna get a full playthrough of Stellaris in. Nara says I do. It's a commitment. Good, Nara. I like commitment. Yes, Yanko. I bought all the I bought I bought all the DLCs, and I got ten percent off on them. So, yeah. Um. Yes. Um. If you know anything about me, I I like to buy shiny, brand new things. Um. So this is why we're gonna get a a complete full playthrough of Stellaris. I want to experience it all. I'm gonna hit guys. For game t details, I'm not going to go over all of this. Um, again, this is information overload. I have no clue what this is all about. Um, it looks like you can add more empires. We are going to have nine empires, galaxy size, 600 stars. Let's just keep everything standard here. Xbox has it for free if you have that. No, Marietta, I do not have Xbox. Okay, Nara says go with defaults. Okay, I will. All right, guys. Ian is... Ian's want me to hit the play button. I can hear him. Um, yeah, Ian says I don't know enough to play with the settings. You're right, Ian. So we're just going to hit the play button. Are you guys ready? Let's go. Let's do this. Wow, what a beautiful wallpaper, guys. What a beautiful wallpaper. This game looks amazing. Ian, Ian says go. Wow, Ian. Marietta says you don't need need it. You bought it already. Just Game Pass has it for free if you want to try it first. Oh, okay. The art is lovely, says Ian. Yeah, I love the art. I love the music already. The music in this game is really nice. Mm -hmm. Wow, guys, we, we are in the game. There's so much on the screen. I almost, I, I, I want to have an anxiety attack. There's so much on the screen. I, I don't even know where to start. Okay, I don't even know where to start. This is nuts. Okay, all right, guys, let's explore the user interface. So here we are, we have a ruler and look at all this information. Marietta, why would you turn the music off? Is the music too loud, guys? Let me know if the music is too loud. I can turn it down. So.
Okay, so we have our ruler. This is our ruler, apparently, and this is uh, Dolores. Welcome, Dolores, to the United Nations of Earth, a representative, representative democracy. Our ethics are a fanatic egalitarian. So we love people. We love people. And um, what's this? A xenophile. Okay. So we, we love Xenos, guys. We love Xenos. As a nation, as humans, we love humans and we love aliens. Okay? It looks like there are a bunch of Empire modifiers. Don't know what those are. But so far, I know I'm a f fanatic egalitarian and a Xenophile. And then we have some Civics over here. Beacon of Liberty. Okay. And then a bunch of other modifiers. And then idealistic foundation. Okay. All right. And then this is Earth. Okay. And what's this? Okay. Continental preference, adaptive, nomadic, and wasteful. Okay. So these are kind of like these are these are kind of like traits, our human traits. This is your species. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I get that concept. The humans is my species. Um, got it, Ian. Thank you. Okay, Marietta. Let me know if it gets too rep you know, t too much for you. I, I can definitely turn it down. I can turn it down a few notches. But so far, the music sounds really good. I like the music. Ian says the line above is your government society. Ian, one thing at a time. Let's just focus on this dialogue, this this box here. So we have our origin here and we have what's this prosperous unification through its strife and triumphs. So this society has reached every young civilization ambition a home world with unified goals and a path to open stars oh i like that guys i like the sound of that okay <laughs> ian says it was this dialogue okay let's see what ian said here this line above your government society i'm not sure what you mean Ian says, the line above your government, where's, this is my ethics, civics, and then these are like traits. Is this my government? The representative democracy? Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Sounds good, Maria. Just, just let me know. So guys, let's read this. Much has happened since modern humans first emerged in Africa some 200,000 years ago. Our kind spread rapidly across most of the globe, and soon the first civilization took form. Scientific progress has been swift, though not without cost. Wars claimed millions of lives even before the atom was tamed. And the turmoil of the 21st century saw the mandate of the United Nations gradually expanded in an effort to create stability. Oh, thank you for the United Nations. By the early 22nd century, the supranational organization had become a de facto world government. Okay, that's great. Wow. Uh, wow, uh, wow, my English skills uh, are, are going to be tested already in this game. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Through some still recent, uh, uh, the power wielded by the UN as a evidence during the, the Mar Martyrian police action of 88, if you can deny that the technological breakthrough that have come out of the sponsored research program with recent completion of their first 
true starships. Mankind is about to embark on a new era of space exploration. Sweet, guys. So the humans have united under one banner, the United Nations, a de facto world government. Oh, that's great. Although there's been some turmoil in the past getting up to the state, uh, us humans uh, finally have some kind of unity um, and we're uniting. And with that, we've unlocked our first true starships and we're ready to embark on a new era of space exploration. Wow, that sounds exciting. That sounds exciting. Yanko, is this like Dyson Sphere program? No, this is not automation. Although there is some kind of, it, it deals with resources, but this is not like <laughs> automation games. This is a grand strategy game. This is a grand strategy game. So guys, let's hit the begin button and let's begin our journey as the humans exploring the stars. Here we go, guys. Wow. Good day, Madam President. I am Veer, a prototype synthetic intelligence. My job is to offer advice and assistance as we seek our destiny among the stars. Yes, Yonko. Yes, Yonko. So this is a... Um... Ian, can you can you describe what um, grand strategy is and the four bullet points? It's exploration, uh, it's annihilation, and then there's two other ones: exploration, annihilation, something like that. There's four though. Ian, what are the four? grand strategy with yeah with definitely war mechanics you're exploring the galaxy and you'll discover other aliens in the galaxy ah there it is ian ian is, has has put it down there exploration exploitation x something and x <laughs> extermination okay it is a 4x, yes. Yonko, it is a 4x grand strategy, which sounds so cool. Guys, this is set in space. This is Paradox has a lot of other games like this, um, but those settings did not, the universe that they're set in did not appeal to me like this one. This one's in space, and I love space. I love stars and planets and nebulas and. Um, aliens, I, I love it. So this is why I chose it. But th there's, there, there are resources in this game. There are resources in this game. And there's a lot of management. You got to manage a whole empire. And, um, so this, it, it's, it's pretty nutty. But guys, let's, uh, let's start with the interface, okay? So we, we've just came across our advisor and uh, he said, good day, Madam President. I am Ver, a prototype synthetic intelligence. Oh, wow. Okay. My job is to offer advice and assistance as we seek our destiny among the stars. Okay, guys, tell me everything. Yes, full tutorial. So I'm going to enable this. And let's see how well Paradox has done with their tutorial system. An excellent decision. You will have my full support. All right. Thank you. Good to know. Good to know. Building a star empire can be a daunting task. To help get things started, I will be providing instructional missions that cover the basic steps necessary to establish ourselves as a successful interstellar power. Okay, excellent. So, uh, situation log. Okay, updated. That sounds good. Okay, so I have the scroll wheel. So the scroll wheel will move me in and out. 
Very nice. And then I have WASD keys to scroll the camera around. And it appears that this is our solar system, right? This is our solar system. So we have Earth here. We have Earth here. We have Luna, which is our moon. And we have Saturn. And it looks like we have the asteroid belt. Oh, no, this would be the asteroid belt because it's between Mars and Jupiter. So we have Mars here, um, Earth, Luna, and then Venus. I would imagine this is Mercury, uh, Jupiter. Yes. Okay. Jupiter is there. And then we have Neptune and then Triton, which is one of the moons of Neptune. Where's Uranus at? Where is Uranus? I, I don't see where Uranus. Oh, here it is. Uranus. Uranus is my favorite planet in our solar system. Definitely by far. It's just so beautiful. Ur Uranus is tilted on its axis and it represents that here in the game. So I, I like the attention to detail here. As Uranus spins on its side. It spins on its side. It's crazy. Okay, excellent. So left um, that scrolling in. Okay. Okay, that, that sounds good. And wow, we have all of these dialogue boxes here. This is just so much going on here. So, yeah. All right, so let's go from the top menu here, guys. We have, we have the basic controls here. Settle down. Uh, WSD to move and then the mouse will to to scroll in okay if I click can I click on earth this is our home world and the capital of our empire the planet summary screen which we are currently looking at provides an overview of the planet's important statistics and allows us to set a designation if desired as well as the option to automate the planet okay understood understood oh, okay wow this is just so much information this is crazy um so i have earth selected earth yes this is earth oh i can rename the planet no we're gonna leave it we're gonna leave it oh my goodness information overload okay so i have earth selected and my camera is centered on earth which is really nice so i can zoom in and then i can actually move this dialogue which is really helpful and if we take a look at Earth, you can see it's rotating, has some really cool graphics on it. I like this. Wow. Okay. Um, I'm not going to explore this right away. I, I just wanted to see if I could click on this and I can zoom in. So if I click on Luna, I can probably zoom. Oh, wow. If I hold the, if I press the middle mouse button in, I can drag around like this okay that's nice so luna yeah oh take a look at this guys luna is a barren world and a barren and rocky world with a thin or non-existent atmosphere the surface is covered in meteor impacts craters and is completely devoid of life yeah of course and then luna has two of these guys resources has two of these guys whatever this is it has two i see that right here what's this engineering research two okay so this is two engineering research is that correct ian ian says take a look at the top bar first okay i'm okay let's do, i'm gonna I'm going to do that, Ian. Let, let's go over the top navigation bar first. I'm going to take Ian's advice. Oh, I can rotate with the right mouse button. Okay. I can rotate like this with the right mouse button. Okay. Very nice. I like this. And if I hold down the mouse wheel, I can just click and drag around in the solar system. Okay. All right. So let's start up here and what we have is energy credits ah okay this kind of reminds me energy cre credits okay ian says these are your resources 
Okay, stored and produced. Okay, okay, so... So we have a total of a hundred... Okay, I see this. Okay, it says there in the drop-down box, it says a hundred stored energy credits. I have a hundred stored energy credits. Okay, and then... I have a monthly gain of plus 120.66. Okay, so I'm generating monthly 120 of these guys, of these energy credits. And then is that under produce, Ian? Is that the breakdown of where I'm making the energy credits? I think it is. So. I have a base of 20, a trade of 58.16 stations, 15 jobs, 67.89. And oh, wow. And then consumed, we're consuming 40.39. Okay. So our ships are consuming. We have stations that are consuming star bases, buildings, districts. Okay. Energy credits is an energy credit backed currency accepted by all species faring races okay you can gain more energy credits by number one building generator districts oh okay what are generator districts on the surface of colonized planets okay using construction ships to build mining stations around energy rich planets or stars okay so i can use a so i have a construction ship and that thing can build mining stations around planets or stars. And then I can also sell resources on the market. Oh, very nice. Okay. Okay, Ian says yes. Okay, so we have some energy credits and we have 50,000 that we can store up. And we only have a hundred right now. Okay, what's the next one here? This is minerals. Minerals is collected, a collective term for the basic resources we need to construct ships, stations, and planetary buildings. We can gain more by building mining districts. Okay, so this is kind of the same thing as the energy, energy credits. And then minerals is a bit different. Okay, so this constructs ships, stations, and planetary buildings. Okay, I probably won't remember that, but I'm sure Ian will remind me. Uh, the next resource we have is food. We have 200 food out of, okay, 15,000. And all right, and food represents the various nutrients request or required to sustain and grow pops. Oh, we have to grow pops, okay. Uh, you can gain more by building architecture or ar agriculture districts on the surface of colonized planets, okay, or from the market, okay, gotcha. Uh, Ian says, yum, yum. Okay, Todd. Oh, I Todd, welcome to the live stream. How you doing, Todd? Todd, Todd says, um, okay, I will revise my tutorial. <laughs> Todd, I can give you a condensed tutorial, build an empire, become more powerful than other empires to defeat them when. Wow, Todd, thank you for that helpful tutorial. Wow. <laughs> Okay, uh, wow. Okay, so this is, wow, this is food that's required to sustain our population. What's this? Consumer goods. What are consumer goods? Uh, consumer goods is an advanced resource that represents various gadgets. Oh, luxuries and goods necessary to give your pops a good life and to perform. Okay. Okay, jobs such as research, building civilian and in industry buildings on the surface of colonized planets. Okay, 
and building industrial districts on the surface of colonized planets. Wow, okay. So these are like, um, let's say if Marietta had to go to the, the store to get some makeup or something. Those are the consumer goods. Marietta. <laughs> okay, I, I think I understand consumer goods. These are just... These are just luxury goods. Okay. <laughs> Beria says, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, I get it. So our, our population needs luxury goods to, to, to be happy. So uh, apparently there's some kind of happiness mechanic in this game. So yeah, we'll, we'll make sure. And we have plus six right now. So plus six on the luxury or the consumer goods, the food, minerals, and energy credits, 120. So we're in the positive here, guys. We're in the positive. Very nice. Okay. And then what's this? Uh, this is alloys. And alloys are advanced resources with a military application. Oh, okay. Which we need to construct ships and star bases. We can gain more by building alloy foundries or industrial districts on the surface of colonized planets. Marietta says, <laughs> okay, Marietta says, the plan is to have a surplus and not negative resources. Yes, Marietta, thank you. Todd says, Mari Marietta looks beautiful even without makeup. Me, not so much. Okay, <laughs> I agree, Todd, I agree. Um, so excellent Marietta scratch Marietta scratch the makeup. You don't need to buy makeup. What, what else? What, um, what cosmetic things do you use if any? Maybe you don't. Okay. So we have alloys that help us build, uh, build ships. Okay. And then we have influence and we have a total of a hundred stored influence. Mary says, I don't. Okay. Ian says, alloys are generally used to build stuff. Yeah, like ships. Okay, so they're rarely found naturally and need to be made. Yeah, that's, that's based off what I read. I need to make alloy foundries and industrial districts. Okay, and then we have influence represents the political clout. Ooh, okay. And it is used for many things like making claims and building outposts. The gain rate remains fairly consistent throughout the game, but can be increased by declaring other empires your revival or, or your rivals and increasing your power projection. Okay. Power projection grants up to two influence, depending on how many ships you have compared to your empire size. Okay, that's a lot of information. So we're gaining plus 3.24, and I do notice the green. Green represents good, and there's yellow, which I would imagine is neutral. And then red would be negative. Okay. Influence. Okay. And then what's this? Unity. Ian says influence will limit your expansion. Oh. Okay. Well, that we need a lot of influence, Ian. Sorry, I had to take a lot of... I had to take a drink of water. It's a lot of reading going on here. Unity is your togetherness oh yeah i mean yeah unity unite makes sense okay again guys we'll, we'll go deeper into all of these very slowly but we're just doing a general overview of all of our resources here so we have unity and uh, unity is used to unlock new traditions recruit leaders and, and enact enact edicts we can increase our output by building the the wow the, let's just call it a monument <laughs> and it produces unity okay that sounds good um so we're consuming eight unity 
and we're producing 47.27. Okay. Yeah, Nara, this is a lot of reading. Yeah, my English is going to be tested. So um, if I can't pronounce words, I do apologize. <laughs> uh, so guys, we have this over here. We have Physic Research plus 25, Society Research plus 25, and Engineering Research plus 30. Oh, guys, there's the Engineering Research. There's the engineering research, plus 30. Okay, and if you look, Saturn has four. We're collecting engineering. Okay, this little cog icon represents engineering research. Ah, yes, and then that's up here. Oh, okay. So we're gaining four engineering research okay let's not get too ahead of here and uh okay excellent and then what's this volatile moats exotic gases even more resources wow rare crystals living metal Zro, dark matter wow nanites minor artifacts ian what is all of this about this is crazy Okay, Ian says these are rare, rare resources. Okay, so these are one, two, three, four, five. These are our basic five resources, and then we have a bunch of re rare resources here. They're very rare, says Ian. Black magic. Oh, wow, that sounds exciting. Okay, okay, and then let's continue, guys. We have Empire Size. We have empire size. Our total empire size is 50. Okay. And then that kind of breaks down under the empire size. It breaks down everything. 13 districts, one system, one colony, 32 pops. Okay. So those are all contributing to my empire size. Okay. And, and we have beacon of liberty. Um, liberty. So that's actually reducing... The empire size demand? Is that, is that right? I, I don't know. <laughs> um, when your empire gets too big, you start paying. Okay. So, so my empire can get too big, apparently. My empire can get too big. So I got to be careful on how big my empire gets. Okay. Ooh, wow, this is so much information. All right, let's go to the next one, guys. We're just going over this really briefly. This is my empire population. So, so far, we have 32 humans on Earth. Now, I hope we have more than 32 humans on Earth. Does... 32 humans, does that, like, represent, like... Does one human represent, like, 1 billion people or 1 million people? I mean, I understand they, they can't use billions and millions here. They got to reduce it down to simple numbers. But I would imagine this kind of represents like billions of humans. And we, we see that by just looking at Earth. You can see the lights coming from the buildings from space. So there's there's got to be billions of humans down here. Joseph Slack. Welcome to live stream, Joseph Slack. Everyone, welcome Joseph Slack to the live stream. This is my first time playing Stellaris or any, ty any type of grand strategy game. And I, I picked Stellaris because I love space. So this is my first time. I have no clue what I'm doing. So Joseph Slack says 32 represents close to 38 billion humans. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. One pop is required to start the colony. Thank you, Ian. Don't know, but okay. Joseph Slack says it's a very good game. By the feel that I'm getting so far, I really love I really love the concept of this game. It's just I'm super overwhelmed right now. Joseph, I'm super overwhelmed. And um I'm very overwhelmed. 
<laughs> I, don't, I don't know how else to dis better describe how, how overwhelmed I am right now, but I'm I'm currently working through the top bar here. We're, we we just went over the basic resources, so we have five basic resources, and then we went over influence, unity, research, and we have these rare resources. So now I'm, I, I just finished up with empire population. And then I, I asked that question, what does 32 represent? And uh, so 32 kind of represents billions of people. <laughs> uh, Nara says, wait till you see the universe map. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> yeah. So Joseph Slack, I appreciate you stopping by. If you if you are enjoying this content and you want to see more of it, hit that like button. And this way I'll know to continue to play Stellaris. Right now, the current series that I have on this YouTube channel is centered around automation. And uh, so I played through Dyson Sphere program. That was a blind playthrough, and I'm currently playing a blind through a blind playthrough of Satisfactory. So that's the main game on the channel. But I'm opening up um, Stellaris to the channel to kind of get away from automation and, and see if I if anyone's interested in it. So if you're interested in um, seeing this series continue, and this is a blind playthrough, hit that like button, subscribe. I would appreciate it. Um, so yeah. Um, okay, where, where was I? Wow, Joseph Slack is distracting me. Um, okay, leader capacity. So... What's this? We can effectively support up to six leaders. We currently have four. Okay. So we have a capacity of six and three available envoys. Exceeding your leader capacity will add increasingly severe penalties. Oh, okay. On upkeep and experience gain for all your leaders. Leaders capacity can be increased by unlocking certain traditions, technologies, or by performing or reforming your government authority. Wow, we could reform our government, guys. Oh, by the way, um, Joseph, I, I select Un United Nations of Earth, the humans, of course. Everyone has told me to start with that. Joseph, uh, Joseph Slack says... <laughs> Marietta says, this is a blind playthrough, so no telling, unless he asks, please. Yes. So, Joseph, this is a blind playthrough, so no spoilers. No spoilers. Okay? No spoilers here. Um, if I do ask for help, please help me. But I want to try to figure this out on my own. So, this is a very slow and methodical breakdown of the interface to try to grasp the mechanics of this game. So please understand that um, my perspective is just overwhelmed. So if you provide too much information to me, like Ian does, <laughs> it's going to be, you're going to bury me in a hole really, really deep and I can't breathe. So give me a little breathing room and uh, I just hope I can get through this playthrough. The goal is to try to get through this playthrough and... Uh, yeah, with your emotional support, Joseph and Ian and everyone here, we'll, we'll get through it. We'll get through it. No, Ian, don't shut up, Ian. I Ian, you're too black and white. I want you to talk, Ian. So please, you're doing a good job so far. <laughs> um, you've been very helpful, Ian, so good, good start. Um, Ian has told me to start off with the top navigation. So those are the kind of things you can help me off with. So maybe as I continue to explore the top menu here, you guys can think about the second thing I can um, explore. What's the second thing I should explore after the top bar? Joseph says, I got 800, on, 800 hours on Stellaris. Wow, Joseph. I'm so glad you stopped by then because I can definitely use your experience here. Uh, you tagged with Ian and um, maybe Todd 
I think Todd has experience. Nara, so we can't tell him about spoilers or the spoiler. Yes, thank you, Nara, for explaining that. Yeah, you're correct, Ian. We'll we'll get to everything. We'll we'll experience everything together, guys. I love learning new games. It's so much fun. It's so exciting, and it's even more exciting when you guys are here with me. So I appreciate you guys stopping by. I appreciate it. So guys, um, with all that out of the way, uh, we we just finished up leader capacity. So we're gonna head over to starbase capacity. We have two more items over here. Think about what I should explore next after this. So starbase comp capacity, we have a effectively support a total of three upgraded star bases. Okay. So apparently they're star bases. Outposts do not count towards this cap. So base three. Okay, so we have one star base and we can support up to three. That's what I'm getting from this. Is that correct, guys? Is that correct? So we have one star base and we can su support up to three. And it says here at the bottom, exceeding your star base capacity will cause your star bases to have an increased upkeep cost. Oh, OK. So I want to stay in this limit, guys, because if I let's say if I get four out of three star bases, then I'm going to be paying a bit more in upkeep. Oh, OK. So be mindful of that. All right. And it also says you can increase your number by certain technologies and traditions. OK, that's really nice. That's really nice. OK. Ian says you'll get more. Joseph says yes as you expand. OK. It's like building a government building you can't afford to run <laughs> okay thank you for that joseph uh, and then we have naval capacity guys naval capacity we can effectively support a number of ships equal to 30 units worth of fleet size okay so we have three out of 30 ships okay three out of 30 ships exceeding your naval capacity will cause your ships to have an increased upkeep cost okay Got it. So, wow. From my understanding, we should not exceed our numbers here. So I should not exceed 30. I should not exceed three star bases or 30 ships. And again, it says you can increase your star base anchorage, anchorages and some pops jobs and also by certain technologies and traditions. Okay, so we can increase this just like the star bases. Very nice. Yeah, we're gonna have to increase all these eventually. Okay, so, so yeah, I can go over this, but I'm gonna be paying a premium. I'm going to be paying a premium if I go over these. So I gotta be very careful. So if, if I had the economy, maybe there's a certain situation where I have to or I should go over the limit. I should do that as long as I can support it with my economy. If I have a big backlog of energy credits or, well, alloys, right? Alloys is what sustains our ships from what I read. So if we have enough alloys stored up or we're producing enough, we, we could do that for a short term. Ian says, yep. Joseph says, yes. Okay, I get it. I got it. Okay, sounds good. So it's not a it's not a black or white situation here. So I got to get that out of my mind that this is not a black and white situation. And it's just saying that, hey, be careful. If you go over this, you're going to be paying a premium, which I like that mechanic. That's really cool. Yeah, J Joseph says, like, war. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Well, guys, hopefully we'll make peace with all of the aliens in the galaxy. Right? Okay, guys, that's the top bar. That is the top bar. We we just went over the top bar. Wow, it's still a lot of information. And we'll be going over all of this as we go through the playthrough. But I have a general idea of, of this. And... Um, 
yeah, I, I'm not going to remember all of this, but as I play the game, I'm sure it will be burnt into my brain. And, uh, okay. Joseph says, run your empire however you want to run it. I will, Joseph. I will. I promise you that. Ian says, the far right of the top bar. Okay, so the far right of the... Oh, over here, Ian. The, oh, oh, I didn't even see this over here. What's this all about? Let me take a drink of water, guys. My mouth is getting dry. All right, so we have a. Okay, so our game is currently paused. Oh. Okay. So click to resume. And then it kind of goes over the hotkeys. I see. And so we have faster, slower. Okay, faster, slower. Very nice. So if I hit the, if I hit this, click to resume. Okay. To overcome the vast distances that separate star systems, our scientists have developed the hyperdrive. This device permits travel at speeds far exceeding that of light between systems connected by hyperlanes. Okay, guys, there is. A toggle for how you play so i could pause the game oh that's so that's super interesting so the game was paused the the entire time okay <laughs> so yeah i paused the game again but we can speed it up right we're on normal speed but we can we can set it to slow we can set it to also to slowest is that the okay so slowest is the the smallest setting and then and then slow, normal, fast, and fastest. Okay. Okay, let's just pause the game here. Okay, excellent. Wow, this is this is really interesting mechanic. The fact that I can pause and play a game, that's interesting. That's interesting. Well, that's really helpful because that will help me think about what I need to do. Nara says, Remember, this is a real time. So if the game is not paused, the computer players are getting stuff done. Oh, <gasps> okay. Wow. Okay. That is a good tip. Thank you, Nara. So we're going to keep the game paused as I continue to break down the interface of Stellaris. So we'll keep it, we'll, we'll keep it paused and then we'll keep it on the slowest setting. Okay. Does that sound good? Yeah, Joseph Slack says, keep it paused. Okay. Underneath the top bar is your message stack. Well, okay. Um, top bar message. Okay. Marietta says, and remember, the AI, the AI is knowing and cheats at times. Really, Marietta? I thought you didn't play this game, Marietta. I swear you said you didn't play this game. Maybe you have a general knowledge or you're doing some basic research to help me out. Okay. <laughs> Nara says, yeah, pause it when you're reading and learning things. Okay, for sure. Um, excellent. We have the hyperdrive, guys. Yep. Got it. Hyperlanes. Okay, cool. We'll hit okay on that. Toggle music player controls. Oh. What's this? Music player. Oh, wow. So these are all of the tracks that are going to be played. And we're currently on the birth of stars. Oh, that's really nice. Ooh. And then music volume. Okay, got it. Perfect. So if it gets too loud for Marietta, we can always just turn this down. Okay, perfect. Excellent. And uh, so where should I start next, guys? Where should, wh what should I do next? What interface should I tackle next? Um, we have these guys here. We have these three items kind of dangling down here. What are these all about? Y 
Yeah, Joseph, um, just by playing the game so far, the music is wonderful in here. I love the music so far. Well done. I love the wallpaper and the art for Stellaris. So, so far, so good. My impressions are just, I love this. I love what I'm seeing and hearing already. <clears throat> the outlier tab says Nara. The big grid on the right is a summary of your empire, so don't worry about that one yet. Okay, thank you, Nara. Ian says that is your message stack. Announcements will appear here left to right. Okay. Joseph says blue, green, and orange represent different branches of tech. Okay. Uh okay, Ian says they're telling you to start your research. Okay. So we need we need to research. We need to research, guys. Okay, so let's tackle this. So we have physic, physics research. Ooh, that's cool. And then we have society research and then the engineering research. Ah, okay, guys. So let me explain what I'm thinking here. So I did see that under Saturn, we have four of these engineering research here. Okay. And it's it's highlighted in green. So I'm not, I think we are collecting this. I think we're collecting for engineering research. We're collecting four. And that is going into the pool of research here, right? Because we're collecting plus 30. And I see the gear, the yellow gear icon, and I see a yellow gear icon here. This says engineering research. So this is tied to to this and to to Saturn. To Saturn. Is that correct? Ian says yes. Look above Saturn. I believe it has an orbital station on it. What's an orbital station? Is it this guy? What's a this? research station built in orbit of a planetary body will gather its physics, engineering, and society research data. Wow, thank you for that. Okay. I did not see this, guys. I did not see this. Nara, Joseph, and Ian says yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, this is so cool. Okay. Oh, I'm getting so excited. So we have this research station above Saturn. Look, it even has hull points, armor, and upkeep. Okay, so it's taking one energy for upkeep, guys. Can we see that under the upkeep here? Oh, guys, check that out. Check that out. So we're consuming... We're consuming for... So under the consumed there, you see negative 40.39. There's, there's a, it says station. It says three. It says three. And this says an upkeep of one. So are we upkeeping? So, so yeah, I think that's what, so we must have like three stations in our galaxy that we're upkeeping. And this is one of them. This is a this is a research station. Is that correct, guys? Am I am I on the right path here? Ian says, "Don't worry about that." Uh, Joseph says you could build more things, so don't. Okay. Each each planet can have their orbital station. Oh my goodness. Okay. You have a few existing stations. Yeah. So I must have three. I must have three existing stations. And this is one of them. Joseph says, I'm trading one energy for four tech. Really? Where do you see that? One energy for four tech. Is that under... Where's the research tab? Uh, over here. We have plus 30. How do I know that it's doing that, though? On the planet. Oh, okay. Uh, 
Oh. Okay, so... Wait, this says five, and this says four. This is Saturn, this is Saturn, and this is Saturn. So why is it saying five and four? I don't understand that. Am I collecting four, or am I collecting five? Ian says on Earth. Joseph Slack says, hmm, that's odd. Yeah, this is really odd. I see four on Saturn, but then if I click and open this dialogue, it says five. So I, I don't understand why that is. Am I collecting four or five? Your research bo bonus says Ian. Okay. What is my research bonus? Am, am I getting ahead of myself, guys? Let me know if I'm getting too ahead of myself here. Nara says traits. So should, should I worry about this, guys, or should we dive deeper into this a bit later? Okay. So, all right. So from what I'm hearing you guys saying is Saturn is generating five. No, it's gener. It gives me five engineering. And my research station for one energy credit, it's given me four engineering research. Okay. We're collecting five in total, but those are from sources. I don't know what, what they're from. No clue. But at least I know that this guy, this research station is grabbing the four engineering from a Saturn. So one energy credit for for engineering research. Is that correct, guys? Black Cat Red River. Wow, that's a very long name. Welcome, Black Cat Red River, to the live stream. Everyone, welcome, Black Cat Red River, to the live stream. This is my first playthrough of Stellaris and of a grand strategy game. No spoilers, please. No spoilers. But welcome to the welcome to my live stream, Black Cat River. Um, just really quickly here, I don't want to bog you down on this, but since you're new here, um, this main channel, this YouTube channel, I have one series going on, and it's focused. Uh, this YouTube channel is focused around automation, as of now. And I, I did a blind playthrough of Dyson Sphere Program, and I'm currently in a blind playthrough of Satisfactory. That is the main game on this channel. But I, I have broken out from automation and into Stellaris for the very first time. So Stellaris is not the, the main game on the channel, so it won't take priority. S Satisfactory will, but I will be playing this game. So if you want to see more of Stellaris on this channel hit that like button subscribe let me know and uh, I appreciate you man I appreciate you stopping by so anyways with that said let's continue guys okay well at least I know where I'm getting the four engineering credits or four engineering research I'm getting it from this research sta station which is costing me one credit upkeep okay and those four engineering research are part of the pool here right because i have plus 30 so i i know we're getting four added to that plus 30 at least from saturn we're actually we're actually gathering five but i don't know where the other one is coming from no clue but we won't go deep into that anyways um so yeah and how we got to this point is i saw the engineering research I saw this engineering research icon. I linked them together. And so I, I, I'm just kind of exploring everything as I see it. And uh, is there any other items of research in here as far as engineering? I know we're getting four from Saturn. Okay. I don't see any other ones. Okay, anyways, guys, let's um let's Let's click this. Let's see what happens if we click this.
Luna has some from memory, says Ian. Um, oh yeah, look, Luna has two. Thank you for that, Ian. I appreciate that information. So we can actually collect two engineering from Luna. Oh, guys, look at that. The number is in two, is, is white. So we're not collecting it. And I don't see any research station above it like I do with Saturn. We have one over here. Okay. So at some point, we're going to have to get a research station over Luna to give us this, uh, the two engineering. Uh, Joseph said, Joseph said, yeah, that's right. It's untapped. Ian says, yes, correct. And, uh, Nara says, it's white. It's not being collected. Yeah, I get it. Um, I, I get it. I used to be a user interface de designer, so colors were a very important thing. So I understand the white, the yellow, the green, um, and the red. Uh, so, so yeah. Got it. Got it. Okay, excellent. Excellent. So let's click on physics research, guys. Let's click this. The technology screen is where we will be directing our research efforts. Technologies are categorized into three different fields, with each field typically having three available research options. Okay, I appreciate that. Understood. Well, well, not really. We'll hopefully understand it. Okay, wow. We are presented with another screen. We're presented with another screen. What is going on here, guys? <laughs> Nara, yeah. Nara, wrong game. Wrong game. So Ian says you can choose one of three research projects. Okay. All right. So. So who is this? Wow. We'll just call her Sana. Stananik. Statnik. Statnik. Sana Statnik. Well, okay. Uh, what's this? Science survey speed plus 10. Arche archaeology skill plus 1. Wow. What's this? Skill level. Oh, wow. So our researcher, Sana, has skills. And she's 1 out of 10 right now. And she has 22 experience. And the next skill level is 400. Wow. Wow. So we need to get 400 experience before we get to skill level two with her. Okay. How do we do that? She has some traits here. Is that what it is? I for talent plus 10. Skill level. Survey speed plus 10. Archaeology. Okay, one. And council. Okay, yeah, that's a lot of information. I don't know what that all does. What's this? A mining rush. L okay, a leader trait. Oh, okay, this is a trait. Mining rush. Empire effects as counselor. Minerals from pops, right? Those are pops from what we read over here. I saw the icon there. So these are pops or humans. Populations. Okay. So we're getting, all right. She's giving us a bonus. Fifty-two point two nine progress a month. Wow. Okay. A lot of, okay. This is physics. Okay. We're in the physics tree right now. Physics research, select a technology to research. Whenever we finish researching a technology up to three new option will be generated. Okay. Very nice. Okay, Ian says she will gain experience by doing stuff. Nara says, I accept and endorse that interpretation, Ian. <laughs> okay, so we need to pick one of these. We need to pick one of these. Okay, so we have physics research from researchers plus 20%, a mo empire modifier 
plus 20%. What's this? Covert Operation Path. This technology will lead to further advancement in espionage and convert covert activities. Wow. That sounds very sneaky. Stana Kadic. <laughs> we, we can rename the leader. Who who wants to be my physics researcher? Who wants to be my 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 physics researcher? Maybe that needs to be Marietta. <laughs> okay. Well, um, Marietta, uh, Marietta, Marietta Finley, Finney, sorry, will be our researcher. Welcome aboard, Marietta, you are <laughs> our physics researcher. Okay, Marietta Finney, excellent, excellent, and, um, okay, guys, I'm going to pick one of these. Let's go over the last one here, um, unlocks, uh, capacity subsidies and energy grid okay building and this is an edict okay and then energy credits hmm <laughs> marietta says <laughs> well um look marietta it's an honorable it's honor honorable to be a physics researcher now if you think it's um below you then we can upgrade you, okay? We can upgrade you. Let me know. Um, but Brett, right now, you're you're ahead of the physics de department, Marietta. So do well for me. Make me proud. <laughs> you're welcome. Um, okay, guys. Uh, physics research from researchers plus 20, right? So I'm thinking we, we should go with quantum theory, right? We, we want to make Marietta Finney... We, we want to give her everything she needs to, to succeed. And um, it's saying researchers plus 20. Uh, that sounds pretty good. What's this? Computing. Okay. I'm not sure what that is. Science applied algorithms. I mean, Marietta, what would you like to go with? Marietta is ahead. She, she's in charge of the, phys the physics. Um, department. So let's have Marietta, with all her wisdom and knowledge in physics, let let's have her choose the first tech. Marietta, what will you, what do you advise me to go with? <laughs> well. Marietta, what do you want to go with? Energy from star-based construction. So field modulation. Okay, Marietta says we're, we're going with field modulation. This is going to increase the production of energy yields. Okay, excellent. And um, we have technicians, plus 20. Star-based construction, plus 10%. Okay, Marietta, here we go. There we go. 39 months remaining. Sounds good. What's this? Change research. Oh, very nice. So we can change research. Enable auto research. No. Nope. Marietta is ahead of our our physics department, so she's going to be calling the shots here. Okay, and then... We have society and engineering. So select research. Okay. And wow. Oh, this is kind of the similar society research from researchers plus 20%. Okay. Kind of like under the physics that had this kind of option here. And then we have naval capacity. 
and defense army and then what's this planetary unification grants a small amount of unity monthly unity plus five percent unlocks additional edicts and campaigns okay this technology will lead to further advancements in capital buildings and unity gain okay excellent and starcraft i'm not sure what this is all about this is interesting okay well i'm gonna go with this is our unity up here so if i select this this is going to give me plus five percent unity so this is going to increase the unity although i'm not sure what unity is completely for but Oh, Ian says those icons link with research bonus. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, does Mer is this is this what you're talking about here, Ian? So Mary Marietta has a mining rush. Is that it? I, I'm not sure. But let's go with Unity, guys. We're gonna get 5% more Unity. Plus, we will unlock some additional edicts. Not sure what that is. But hopefully we'll figure that out. So we'll, we'll queue that up. Now, is Marietta Finney in charge of just the physics? Or is it everything here? I'm not sure. Let's, let's hit engineering. Okay, and we have army damage plus five. Worker pop resource output plus five. Oh, very nice. Powered exoskeletons oh very nice and then we have afterburners afterburners propulsion okay and then we have coil guns small medium and large okay and then kinetic weapons path Okay, so this is focused around military. And I, I think we should go with... This is military too. Army, da damage, um, army damage. I'm not sure what that refers to. But that's going to give me 5%. But this is what I'm looking at. Um, worker pop resource output plus 5%. I mean, that sounds really good to me. So I'm going to select power exoskeletons to get researched here. Okay. Faster spaceships, bang. Not always. Okay. Close the dialogue. Okay. <laughs> Wait, before I close the dialogue, do I have... Is is Marietta Finney, is, is she doing all the research for me? Is that how I in interpret this technology? Technology. Oh, look at this. F4. Oh, okay. All right. I, I guess Marietta is in charge of all of the technology. Oh, she's the administrator, says Ian. Okay. So, Ian, are there other scientists? that are doing the research for me yeah okay marriott is in charge of all the science okay ian says yes okay excellent thank you ian wow so so marietta has a very important task ahead of her <laughs> Nara says, "Well, that sucks. I don't, I don't know how to react to that. <laughs> I'm new to this game, so I don't know. It sounds good to me. I, I just wanted to understand what's going on here. So, uh, all right. Uh, Ian says, close. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Research is done. So, if I hit F5, the leader screen provides an overview nope, of our that's leader screen. And hire, dismiss, and that's F4. Them. Okay." F4 as the hotkey. Okay, excellent.
Okay, so apparently, yeah, this is... This has been updated recently based off of what Nara and Ian has been saying here. So Nara is saying each science had a lead had a lead scientist that boosted specific type of research. Okay. Keep watching for new ones when you play. Okay, I will, Ian. Okay, excellent. So, um, the science is all set up and ready to go, and it's telling me it's going to take me 39 months. 33, 39. Okay, excellent. So, we'll close this, uh, there, and, um, we'll go through this tab a bit later. Okay, excellent. So we went through the top navigation. We went through our science, our technology, and um, Marietta is our administrator of the science, which is great. Um, okay, what do I want to do next here, guys? I mean, we got this navigation over here, and then we have this thing called the outliner. We have this thing called the outliner. And then we have this thing down here. We have a bunch of things over here and over here. Uh, so what should I do next here? Do the right hand list, says Ian. That's a real 39 months of end time. <laughs> the outliner. Ian says the outliner. Okay, let's do the outliner. Wow. It's 10.30 already, guys? This is nuts. Two hours is not going to cut it. <laughs> um, wow. Okay, so... Um, the outliner. So we have sectors, earth... Okay. I can click this and it collapses this. Okay. Okay, so Earth is one of our sectors. And this is our empire capital. Okay, yeah, it's saying United Nations of Earth, population 32, and our species is human. Click to select, double click to, or right, or right click to go to. Okay, so double click. Oh, okay. And then I can right click as well. Double click and right click. So if I go over here and right click on this, it'll take me there. If I go over here, double click on this, it'll take me to Earth. Okay, very nice. Okay, so that's how I kind of filter through my sectors. Okay. Ian says, this is all your assets. Sign ships, easy navigation. Okay. Okay, gotcha. And then we have shipyards. So if I right click on this, and then I can zoom in. This is my sh shipyard. This is our system starbase. These upgradable stations mark star system ownership and are most often tasked with producing all types of ships. That's really loud. Sorry about that, guys. We'll, we'll come from out here. Okay. So this is a star base. Okay, this is our system star base. These are upgraded stations, mark star system ownership, and are most often tasked with producing all types of ships. Okay. But they can be specialized into a variety of functions through the modules and buildings, and they tend to be the last line of defense against enemy fleets in a system. We expand our borders by building star bases in nearby stars or nearby systems, and enemy star bases can be captured by attacking them. Once we have colonized more planets, oh, we can colonize more planets, guys. We can manage to trade routes. Ooh, the star bases inter interface as well. Okay, got it. Okay, but we clicked on military fleets are used to protect our emerging empire from threats or to expand our glorious rule through force of arms, if we so wish. Okay, so our current naval capacity is limited. Yeah, didn't we go over naval capacity? Which was up here, right? Yeah, naval capacity. 
Got it. So our current naval capacity is limited, but it can be increased by researching new technologies. Ah, yes. Okay. Got it. And owning additional pops and building starbase anchorages. Okay, we can assign one of our admirals to a command fleet. Oh, wow. Granting extra military power along with any other bonuses the leaders provide. Okay, wow. So left click on this. Shipyard. Oh, what's this over here? Soul Station. Okay. Wow. Okay, um, <laughs> starport details. Oh, wow, this is a lot of information. Oh, okay, this is our starport. Ah, I get it. Okay. This is our starport, guys. It looks really cool. I like the look of it. Okay. And we're currently on the Starbase tab. Okay, so Ian, you want me to go from from the left to the right? Is that what you want me to do here? So we have some modules here. The rightmost tab, says Ian. Well, let's just go right to left to right, since that's not what they got me on here. Oh, and there's some modifiers. Okay. And then this is defense. So we can build platforms. And I'm lacking 87 of these things. 87 alloys. It, it requires 252. And we only have 165. Okay, got it. Okay, so we could build defense platforms. Okay, so Starbase. We have crew quarters. We have a shipyard and a trade hub. Okay, so from my understanding, we have the shipyard, the tra trade hub, and the crew, the crew quarters as part of this Seoul station or starport. Is that right? Okay. Um All right, and then we Okay, Ian says each star base is customizable. Okay, so currently we have three modules. And uh, so we have a shipyard on this starport and we have a trade hub and we have crew quarters. And these are providing a shipyard is a shipyard may build one ship at a time. Okay. Parallel with other shipyards. Okay, interesting. So this is where we build ships. Okay, how do I build ships? And this is a trade hub, a civilian docking area where merchants and traders can conduct businesses. Okay, and then under buildings here, so we got modules and we have buildings, and then we have crew quarters, provides accommodation and support for spaceship crews, reducing logistical burden on fleets that are berthed here. Okay. Oh, look at that, guys. So, Minister of Defense, negative two. Dock ships, upkeep, negative 25. Oh, okay. So, if we have ships that are near a starport that have crew quarters, 
the upkeep, upkeep of those dock ships is negative 25. That's very nice. Okay, so crew quarters are pretty important to have, which makes a lot of sense. I mean, they go to bat battle, they get tired and worn out, and they need to rest. And if we, if we make them rest, then it reduces our upkeep. Okay, very nice. And so we have a shipyard that produces ships. We have a crew quarters that um, is downtime for the crew. And then we have a trade hub. Collection range plus one. This is a merchant. So this is for trading. Okay, interesting. So we have a trade collection of two. Trade protection range of one. Trade protection eight. Oh, range. Okay, range of one. Protection of eight, hyperlane detection range of two, sensor range two. Okay, a lot of information, but interesting. Okay, and can we see that on here? Can we see the okay? I'm not sure if these things represent the starports and stuff like this. The claw is the shipyard. This thing right here. Okay. So this thing is the shipyard. Okay. Ian says yes. Marietta says, each of the squares is a possibility and some cost to add on. Drown downgrade is to reduce costs, or if you have the same item of a different planet, question mark. Okay. So we have our spaceport here and our space, or space, sh or the shipyard, excuse me. So a shipyard here, and that's represented here. What about the trade hub? Is there a trade hub on here? Is that what this is? Is this a trade hub? Or is that or is that the crew headquarters? This is our science ship, which is used to survey astronomical objects such as planets in a star system. Oh. A planet needs to be surveyed in order to make its resources visible. Okay. Yep, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that later. Trade is automatic. Ian says yes. Okay. Cool. Alright, so if we build these things, they actually attach to the starport. Very nice. And we have a total of about 690 military power on here. It's an estimate of the combined offensive and defensive capabilities of the fleet. Okay. Wow. Alright, let's head over here. We, we looked at this. So, we can actually build platforms and we can get up to six defense platforms but we can't build them because we don't have enough alloys okay got it cool so hopefully we can build some some um, defense platforms in the future okay and then we have the army builder And we can build a assault, assault army that will take 90 and it costs 100 of these minerals and they're humans. Okay. And we can queue up to five armies simultaneously with control. Ian says for planetary invasion. Oh, we can. Oh, wow. Okay, so we can. So if we want to invade a planet, we, we need to build an um, assault army. Wow, that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> okay. All right. I I'm not going to build any of this because we're not... Guys, we're not going to attack any planets, right? We're fanatic e egalitarians. All right, let's go to the last tab in the soul station. Yeah, Ian says don't yet. N yeah, no problem. And guys, we're at the shipyard. Oh, that's right, because we have a shipyard here, and we have a tab for shipyard. Oh, what's this? U at S Hawking. 
UNS India and First Fleet. Can I click on these? Oh, look at this, guys. This is a Corvette. But I just clicked on something. Do I need to click on the Soul Station. First Fleet. Okay. Fleets in orbit. Okay. So I have a Corvette fleet here. Looks like I get, I get like two Corvettes. And they are docked at the star station. Okay, they're docked at the station and our up our upkeep is reduced because they're nearby the star station shipyard or the crew quarters okay and this is also in the outliner here so i can click here or i can click directly on this as well okay okay got it okay so this is just an easier way to kind of cycle through things so i could have like multiple shipyards okay and then this is our fleets oh look okay Ian says yes <laughs> okay and then let's click on the shipyard And what's this? Ships. Corvette. 100 alloy. Takes 60. A construction ship. 100 alloys. Oh, look, guys. A colony ship. This costs 200 food. 200... 200 what are these called? Again, 200... Consumer goods and 200 alloys. So this thing is pretty expensive and it takes 360. Wow. A lot more longer than these. And then we have a science ship. 100 alloys, 60. Okay, so these are just things we can we, we can build from our search from our shipyard. Yeah, Ian says I can't afford it. Yeah, thank you, Ian. Okay, so I think that's everything in the starport. All right. And I can close this. Cool. Okay. All right. So, yeah, we went through. I don't know how. Yeah. Okay. Starbase. Starbase. Okay, so from out here, this is Starbase. But from in here, it's a Starport. And a Star Hold. Interesting, that might confuse me a bit. That might confuse me a bit. But they're saying this is a Starbase. And these are just... Interesting. Okay. And so we can click our Star... A star base from here. Okay. And we can click our fleet from here, which is here. Minister of Defense. Wow. Okay. He's our admiral. Okay. And then we have three out of three. Okay, three Corvettes, three out of three. And we have three up here. So these are in, these are connected, right? So we have three Cor Corvettes. And that's reflected up here in our naval capacity. So I, I could build some Corvettes if I want to, up to 30. But right now I got three. I got three Corvettes here. And if I click on, what's this? Ship details. Whoa, what's this? 
Okay, this is like a breakdown of the Corvettes. Okay, so we have hull points, armor, shield, speed, and evasion, damage, rank, cloaking. Wow. Core components. So we have a, a fission reactor, a hyperdrive, chemical thrusters, a radar system, and basic combat computers. And then for arm armaments, we have small mass driver and nuclear missiles. Wow. This thing has nuclear missiles. That's crazy. Utilities. Um, small deflectors and small nano composite armor. Ship designer, fleet manager. Wow. Okay. This is the Soyuz class Corvette. Very nice. Okay. Those are those are our Corvettes, right, Ian? This is our Corvette. Ian says yes. Okay, excellent. Excellent. All right. Um, wow. So we, we just kind of went through the outliner here, guys. And uh, yeah, so we have three Corvettes available to us. And then under civilian ships, we have the construction ship and a science ship. And if I click on the star base, I saw it somewhere in here. Yes, right here. So under our shipyard, it's telling us we have, what's this, a construction ship. Okay, a construction ship in the outliner, and then science ship in the outliner, and is this a science ship, right? Yes, okay. Left click on the constructor ship. Okay, I will left click from the outliner. So I will, it says construction ship, UNS India. So I'll click on this. This is our construction ship, which is used to construct space stations. When an astronomical object, such as a planet, has been surveyed, we can order this ship to build a research station or a mining station to exploit any resources it may have. Oh, okay. Let's read this, guys. These ships are also used to build star bases. Oh, okay. Okay, so the constructor can build these star bases. Aha, okay. In unclaimed systems. Okay, only in unclaimed systems, making them critical to our expansion plans. Okay, got it. But also, they build these research stations or a mining station to exploit any resources it may have. And that's what the construction ship does. Okay. So I have the construction ship selected here. And so it said I can build mining and research. Okay. And I have it selected here, UNS India. Okay, this is go to. Click to quickly navigate the camera to where the fleet is located. Okay, which it is. And then we have disband. Click to disband this fleet. No, I don't want to do that. Deselect. Okay. And he has a total of 100 hull points, 100 armor and a hundred shields. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Construction ship. And then we have a bunch of options in here. What's this? Build star base. Build mining station. Build research station. Build observation post. Automatic construction. Fleet stance. Build mega structures. Oh my goodness. We could build mega structures, guys. 
The constructor makes orbital stations. Okay, thank you, Nara. Press build science outposts. Okay. Build mining and build research. Do you, Ian, do you, do you mean, um, research station? I think that's what you mean. You say outpost, but it says station here. Research station. Okay. So I'm going to click this and let's see what happens. Ah, uh, okay, I get it, guys. I get it. Oh, okay, so this is how we extract research from planets. I do notice the ring here. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so our constructor is, our construction ship is going to place a research station here and that's going to cost me a hundred of these diamonds i believe they're minerals and we have a hundred minerals so do i just left click on this oh this is luna okay this is not a planet excuse me this is luna which is a moon which is our moon okay got it okay remember everything has a cost and then a recurring energy costs yeah thank you nara i see that right here i see the upkeep so the upkeep is 100 energy credits okay got it so i'm gonna left click on this your attention please oh what happened what just happened, guys? What is this? Um, wow. Is this our galaxy? <laughs> I don't know what I did. I must have hit a button. This is the galaxy? Oh my goodness. Are these all individual stars? Wow. Unknown. Okay, I, I don't want to get into this right away. Um, how do I get back? How do I get back? How do I get back to this? Oh, I just click on it. Oh, okay. I don't know how I got out there, but that's interesting. So. All right, so our constructor is ready to build this. And so... Before we can expand, we must explore, and our science ships are the vessel of choice for such a task. You can identify a science ship by the following symbol. Okay, you can select a ship either from the galaxy map. Oh, I was probably in the galaxy map or the outliner. I have updated the situation log with more detailed instruction. It's now time to survey a neighboring star system. Well, not yet. Well, not yet. We're working with the constructor. Uh, Ian says, yes, you were. Okay. The orange is the path that we'll take. Okay, got it. So the constructor has its orders, but the game is paused, says Nara. Okay, so I need to unpause the game. So let's do that. What's going to happen, guys? Oh, look, guys. The constructor. Wow, look at this. Look at the constructor. Look at him go. And is he going to build this thing? He is. Oh, wow. He has like all these little drones. Pause. Okay, pause. Done. Don't unpause. Pause. <laughs> okay. 
remember, the AI is doing stuff right now as well. Yeah, Nara. But we have to we have to play the game at some point. Go to the science ship. Okay. How do I I'll close this for now and I will click the science ship here. Okay. So I will right click. And then that took me to the science ship and then I'll left click. And I have Marietta Finney here. Oh wow, she's in the science ship? Okay. Interesting. <laughs> the science ship is the last of the starting orders. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the same sort of orders. So um, did we have something regarding the science the ship? The situation log displays a list of all currently available special projects, archaeology sites, and various other points of interest. New items will likely appear as we begin exploring the galaxy. Yeah, because our science is in here. So we have our situation log. Um, yeah, because he mentioned the he mentioned that the tutorial for the survey system was in the situation log over here. So I have the situation log open, and I believe Ian said this is where like all of my messages go. I have important information for you. The victory screen lists certain conditions that we can strive to fulfill. Okay, so tutorial survey system. Okay, thank you for that, Nara. So we need to explore neighboring star system. To do this, select the science ship. Okay, we'll select it. Oh crap, the tutorial went away. Um, situation log? Okay, select the science ship either by clicking on the ship itself or by selecting the vessel in the outliner. Yep, got it, got it. Then click on the survey button in the fleet interface while looking at the galaxy map and select a non-surveyed system with a hyperlink connection to our home system. Our science ship will now plot a course to survey all planetary bodies within that system. So neighboring system surveyed is zero out of one. Okay, so our next step is to survey a system with our science ship and it's saying we need to get to the galaxy map. And we, we did get to the galaxy map. I don't know how I got to that. But we need to look at the galaxy map, select a non-surveyed system with a hyperlink connection to our home system. Go to the sole name tag. I'm not sure what you mean. Bottom screen says Ian. Okay, so Seoul, Empire Capital, United Nations of Earth. Okay. Oh, we can, re oh, we can rename it. Okay, got it. And then this is Galaxy Map. Click to open Galaxy Map. Ah, okay. Uh, oh. Okay, let's let's click it. Ah, okay, that's how you do it. I see. I get it. Okay. And then we can click back on this to do a system view. Okay. Excellent. So we're in the galaxy view here. And I mean, look at our galaxy, guys. We're like almost near the center here. And look at all of these stars. I mean, this is crazy. And then I see a bunch of lines here. We have the Barnard star, the Aldorin, and uh, Aldorak. Wow. And then we've got these lines. Interesting. And we have our fleet, um, our science ship, and then I think this is our constructor ship. 
And then we have some science. We have some engineering, minerals, and energy credits that we still need to tap in the soul system. Okay, got it. Got it. So Ian says the green lines are the hyperlanes. 600 of them. Oh, wow. Okay. So let's head back to that tutorial. So we'll go back to the situation log and read this again. Because it's telling me how to do this. So we made it into the galaxy map and select a non-surveyed system with the hyperlink connection to our home system. Okay. So Ian says these are hyperlanes. And so this one is connected to Sol. And this is connected to Eldorak. So since these are connected, it's saying hyperlink connections to our system. Our science ship will not will now plot a course to say, survey all planetary bodies within that system. We need to explore, select your science ship either by clicking on the ship itself or by clicking on the vessel in the outliner. Yeah, okay. So we'll click the science ship. Okay, and then Marietta Finney is in the science ship and survey, research anomaly, fleet stance, assist, assisted research, science ship automation, experimental subspace navigation, activate cloaking, cloaking, wow, okay, assist cloaking detection, wow, okay. So our science ship can detect cloaking. Okay. So survey. Order the science ship to survey stars, planets, and asteroids. Surveying will reveal detailed information and might even unveil an anomaly. Click on Alderic. Okay. Let's click on it. An unsurveyed system. Oh wow. We're inside of Alderic. Eldrick. Okay, wow, look at this system, guys. We have a class F star. And look at all of this in here. Eldrick 5, Eldrick 4, Eldrick 3, Eldrick 2, and then Eldrick 1. And this is a frozen wheel world, a barren world. A gas giant. A frozen world. Wow. And a molten world. So, yeah, pretty dead place in here. And then we have soul over here. And then unknown over here. Okay, gotcha. So if I go over here. Ah, okay, that takes me to soul. And then Alderic is here, so I can go back. Okay, cool. Very nice. That's what you can see at the moment with their telescopes, okay? Okay, so we'll go back to Seoul. So we know we have Bernard Star. We have Alderic. Let's let's go to the galaxy view here. I see. Okay. So these are all connected. So we can go to potentially habitable. Oh wow. Unsurveyed. Whoa, a trinary star system. Okay, Sol is here. And then, wow, look at all of this, guys. This is nuts. Look at this trinary star system. Alderan. Alderian. Whatever it's called. But wow, three stars in here. And we have a class F. Class B and Class A. And then we have a habitable arid world and savanna world. Okay, so we have two of those in here. Go to. Okay. Whoa. Oh my goodness. So 
this is a moon to this guy here, the planet. Wow. So there's two planets here. But their um, planet has not been surveyed, can only colonize planets inside of the borders. Okay. Ian says it, this place looks valuable. It does. I mean, there are two planets in here that are ha habitable. Ah, okay. So we should probably... We should probably... Click here. And we need to survey Al Alderan because it has two planets in here, as you can see. It has two planets. So we will do that. What about these? What about Bernard Star, though? Anything in Bernard Star? Not really. I don't see anything in here. What's this? Okay, yeah, that doesn't look too promising. So... One at a time, but one science ship. Okay, okay, well, let's click the survey button. I have it clicked. Do I just click on the star system, or...? Here is something that you perhaps didn't know. Now that we have given a command to our assigned ship, it's time to set off. We will need to unpause the galaxy map simulation before anything can happen. Unpause, either press the space bar or the icon above. Here you can also change the speed of which the galactic events are presented. Okay, got it. All right, so we have our science ship ready to survey this place, and wow, is this her path? So she's going to come over here and survey all this. Wow, that's crazy. She's got a lot of work to do. <laughs> Marietta Fenny. Fenny, uh, that looks like a ladder after Tom's heart. <laughs> okay, understood. So, Ian, are we ready to to unpause? Because I, I want to... We, we have our constructor. He's all set to build... A research station, I believe. Okay. Go to shipyard. Shipyard. Here. Okay. Got a shipyard. Got a shipyard and what do you want, Ian? Okay, I need to build another science ship. Ah, uh, okay, so I probably want a second science ship to help me survey all these stars uh, that are connected by hyperlanes. Is it because it takes forever to scan all these items in here? Nara says science ship equals scout. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So we, we probably want a couple of those to help survey all of these star systems. Um, okay, well... Let's just keep it simple for now, Ian. Let's keep it simple for now. I don't want to get too ahead of myself. Okay, so this is part of the 4K. Explore, says Nara. Let's just do one star system at a time. 
I, I understand that you guys say if I unpause this, all of the other AI are playing, but that's just how it is. That's how it is. And uh, we might just die in this game. <laughs> but we, for, for learning's sake, we're going to try one thing at a time. Because I just don't want, want to be overloaded here. Yeah. Okay. So I am going to find my science ship. And I can do that by clicking, which one? Construction and science. Okay, so that is Marietta's path. Okay, so let's unpause and let's see what Marietta does here. There goes Marietta. Thank you, Marietta. And um, is there a way... Can I follow? Can I follow this thing? Okay, I can follow it by using my keys. You may want to speed up. Okay, we will eventually, Ian. We'll, we'll see how long it takes Marietta to get across here. Okay, let's let's do slow. How about that? <laughs> and good luck. Thank you, Ian. I appreciate it. Um, go to. Okay, this is how we follow. Ah, yes. This ship is so cool. Marietta, you have a really cool ship. Okay, and what is it doing? One of our first priorities should be to survey our neighboring star systems. Their resources and any habitable planets will remain unknown to us until this has been accomplished. While slow at first, a science ship's survey speed increases as its assigned scientist grows more experienced. Okay, excellent. Let's pause the game here, guys. Construction completed. Whoa, okay, okay, pause the game. Pause the game. <laughs> okay, let's let's read this first. To begin surveying, yep, select. Okay, yep, got all of that. Okay, one of our first priorities should be to survey a neighboring star system, which we're doing. The resources in any habitable planets will remain unknown until... Okay, until it has been accomplished. While slow at first, science ship survey speed increase as it is assigned. Scientists grow more experienced. Okay, so Marietta, I'm going to get you some experience so you can survey quicker. To begin surveying, select our science ship. Okay, yep, we, we did all of that. Thank you. Okay, and then we have a dialogue here. It says construction completed, and then we can click go to. And we are in our soul star system, and it looks like we completed the research station for Luna. So now we're extracting three engineer what is this engineering okay excellent so we'll hit okay since that is done and then we have two items that have popped down over here and so this is saying construction complete okay ah yes and it's saying research station in orbit of luna very nice and so excellent so good good guys we built our very first Research station around Luna. Wow, I can't believe we, we, we did it, guys. I can't believe we did it. And uh, so we're extracting... We're, we're, we're getting three engineering from Luna. Excellent. And so... Ian says, go to the galaxy map. Okay, so we'll go there. First hundreds to come. Wow, Nara. Yeah, I can't wait. But wow, we placed down our first orbital research station over Luna. And for the very first time, guys, our empire is slowly growing, guys. It's slowly growing. We have a positive income, an additional income of engineering science to help Marietta with the research. Click the uh, constructor. Okay. Oh, look. Constructor is sleeping. So we got to keep this constructor busy. Okay, excellent. And then 
I need to go back into soul and build because we we need to get three more energy and two more minerals. <laughs> Ian, Ian, select build mine mining station. Ian says no. Okay, Ian. Um. I trust you, Ian, but uh, sometimes I uh, gotta learn on my own and make mistakes. Making mistakes is fine, but I'll follow you on this one. I'll follow you on this one. So, select build mining station. Okay, build mining station. Alright, so... I have it selected. And... Now what, Ian? Now select soul. Okay. Oh, that is the star base. Okay. I had it clicked wrong. We already have a star base here. So let me click the build mining. Okay, there it is. And then I should click on here. Whoa, what's this? Okay, let's just left click this. This is... Okay, I left clicked it. I left clicked. This... Oh, would you look at that, Ian? So the constructor is now queued up to do what? He's going to place a mining station over Callisto. And we're going to get two minerals with a mining station. But he's going to come over here as well. Oh. Oh, oh, okay, I get it. So he's going to come over to Jupiter. Marietta. Uh, yeah. It, this construction ship is going to come over to Jupiter, place down a mining station, which is highlighted here. And it's going to mine up. It's going to grab those three energy credits. And once it's done there, it's going to go over to Callisto and build a mining station here to get the two minerals. Ah, okay, so I can do this all from the galaxy mode. And that's going to queue up anything that has to do with minerals. It will queue up everything in the in the in the solar system, right? All at once. Okay, okay, excellent. And so I could do I see. So minerals, three minerals or two minerals and three energy credits. And those are re represented here. Got it. Okay, so it's just a quicker way to queue up work for the constructor. Instead of going in here and individually clicking on them, I can do it from the galaxy map. And I'll do it all, all together. Okay, excellent, excellent. Got it. Thank you for that, Ian. I appreciate that. It's faster. Yes. Okay. And okay, so that's queued up. And this is completed. Okay. And then we have traditions available. We have enough unity to adopt a new tradition. Okay, guys. The icons for the resources will disappear when you exploit them. Okay. But since it's paused, it remains. Okay. So let's click on this and see what these mime faces are. Okay, left The tradition click. screen displays the tradition trees available to our empire. A tradition tree must first be adopted before any traditions within it can be unlocked. Okay. Adopting a tradition tree or unlocking a specific tradition cost a certain amount of unity and the price goes up as we unclock tradition, our empire grows. Okay, so select to choose your first tradition tree. Wow, okay. So we have 300, 300 tradition and... Or, Okay, tradition. Oh, it costs unity. We have 300 unity. 
And that's represented with a full green bar here. Okay. So empty, empty, empty. Ascension perks, empty, empty, empty. So uh, do I just, does it matter which one I empty plus? Okay. Nothing selected. Select. Okay. Does it matter which one I select? Do I just select any one? Traditions. Okay. Oh, the brown tags. Okay, sh sh I'll select this one here. Since it's kind of first. So I I'll select this. And what do we have here? Oh, wow. Wow, this is crazy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay, um Oh, what do we want to special in as a society says Ian? Nara says, oh, that's a bit different, but same effect. Well, what do I want our society to specialize in? Um, I don't know. <laughs> that's a good question. There, there, there's so many to pick from. Like we can select harmony. What's harmony? Few things that can match the strength of content populace working towards a common goal. Okay. Expansion. We must expand our civilization to new systems and planets or risk eventual extinction. Wow. Okay. Um, that sounds pretty important. Unlocks agenda superior colonies. Col col Colony development speed plus 25. Finisher effect. Adopting all expansion traditions will grant the following additional effects. Max districts and ascension perks plus one. Okay, and then we have these like little icons in here. So re reach the stars. Uh, the frontiers of our star nation are being pushed e ever t forward soon. Nothing in the galaxy will lie beyond our grasp. Starbase influence costs negative 10. Courier network. Galactic ambition. Colonization. Fever. A new life. Yeah, so this would... This would really... So if we adopt expansion, this would really help our civilization expand to new systems and planets and if we don't we're gonna risk an eventual extinction and yeah i mean we are heading to our first star system so that seems kind of proper to do they all help says ian <laughs> okay um discovery let's see what discovery is our curiosity about the universe is what got us this far. And there is still so much left to discover. Chart the unknown. Map the stars increased by anomaly research speed increased by 20%. Adopting all discovery traditions will grant the following additions. additional effects. Research speed 10%. Wow, that sounds pretty helpful. Grants access to research cooperative federation type. And such in perk unlocks a plus one. Okay. That sounds really good. 
to boldly go. A new age of exploration is upon us. As we once mapped the surface of our homeworld, we must now brave the new terrain space. There is a galaxy full of wonders awaiting to be discovered. Survey speed plus 35, science ship disengage chance plus 50. Wow, that sounds really good. To boldly go sounds pretty good, Ian. Because aren't we surveying Alderan? Aldarian? <laughs> Ian, <laughs> okay. This sounds really good because if we go with Discovery, we can unlock to boldly go and that will give survey speed plus 35%. And then what's this? Data bank uplink, high capacity quantum bands dedicated to data bank transfers makes possible virtually completely synchronous research operations across vast distances. Research substances, research station outputs. Oh, wow. So all of our research stations will increase the output by 20%. Research from Starbase construction increased by 20%. Wow, that's really nice. Okay, so I'm gonna... Guys, let's adopt Discovery. I think this is a good one to do because of the survey speed to boldly go. So I'm going to adopt this. I, do I just click it here? Adopt. Are we sure we wish to adopt Discovery Traditions? 300 Unity. Um, yes, yes. Council agenda available. <laughs> yes, I am the kid in the candy store or the ice cream store. The agenda chart, the unknown has been unlocked. Okay, did that come with the ascension or with the, with this thing? Okay, okay, whatever this council agenda available. Okay, excellent guys. So we've unlocked our very first tradition and we're going with discovery because as humans, we are, you know, we're exploring new star systems and we need every technological advancement to help Marietta, und you know, reveal the secrets of the mystery uh, of the universe to us. Congrats. When you get more unity, you will be told when you can buy these sub components. Okay, excellent. Okay, yeah, because I'm seeing this and I can't click it. Okay, the reason why I can't unclick it is because it costs 343 unity. And we only have 14. And we used all that unity up for the discovery. Okay, I think that's how it works. Okay, so we need to wait until we get we get uh, some more unity. Okay, excellent. Understood. Excellent, guys. We have unlocked our first tradition. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, so. We have our constructor queued up and he's going to be building mining stations. And then Marietta is all queued up here and she's going to be revealing the secrets of this star system called Aldarian. Okay. And there's a lot of work for her to do. And there's two planets in here, guys. Look at this two planets. So Ian, Guys, are we ready to unpause this? Are we ready to to let the game roll? Let's do it, guys. Let's let's unpause. Aye aye, copped in. Yeah. Here we go. So Marietta is scanning Aldarian C2 
And uh, yeah, I can't look. help but notice that our navy is a bit on the weak side. We are certain <laughs> to face many threats in the galaxy that will require some form of military response. Remember, the survival of our civilization is at stake. <laughs> okay, that's all right. All right, sure. What's this? Council agenda available. Okay, let's pause the game here. And exclamation mark. So we better click the this. council screen is where we appoint the leaders who will guide us into the future. Their personalities and traits will influence our empire for good and bad. We can set agendas in order to focus their efforts in a specific area. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. A counselor can be assigned or replaced at any time, and they can always fulfill a separate assignment, like pilot, pilot, piloting a science vessel. Okay, excellent. So we can reassign positions. Okay, excellent. Uh, the one exception to this is our ruler. Oh, okay. So we can't reassign a ruler to anything else, but everyone else is fair game. Everyone else is fair game. Okay. To unlock further council positions, we will require two things, a civic to match a well, as well as a complete completion of a particular agenda. Agendas progress is dependent on the counselor's level, our empire size and a certain case cases the counselor ethics at its end the an agenda can be activated to convert its working effects into a more powerful one and to make room for a new agenda wow okay legitimacy indicates the population's opinion of our council ethics if a Factions ethics are unrepresented in or rule their happiness may decrease. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is our president. She's on top of the pyramid. Um, president Dolores. And then we have head of research. This is probably Marietta, right? Yeah, Marietta Finney. <laughs> Wow, you, Marietta, you are the right hand of Dolores. Wow. Oh, and if we, if, if you're not doing a good job, Marietta, we can always, um, refresh you. Let's just say that. But head of research is Marietta. Wow. Congratulations, Marietta. And then we have Minister of Defense, uh, Mr. Zhu. You, we'll just call him you. Oh, look, Ian, Ian, you. <laughs> okay, beneath her. Okay, this is skill level, mining rush, skill, eye for talent, skill, minister of defense, admiral and general, president, Unity from factions plus two percent. Okay, and research speed plus two. Okay. Ian, do you want to be the Minister of Defense? Ian, do you want to be the Minister of Defense? No thanks. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Um, I guess you won't be Minister of <laughs> I promise I won't send you into any battles. Okay. Admiral. Ooh, so we can unlock other council positions. Okay, excellent. What's this? Click to see agenda list. Available agendas. Chart the unknown. We must chart all of the mysteries of the galaxy. Survey speed plus 25. Anomaly discovery chance plus 5. 
Wow. Okay. We should go with this. We're going to get another additional 25% survey speed. Wow, look at all of this. Okay, this is unavailable, so we'll 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 hide the unavailable stuff, but we have a few things open here. And I'm looking at chart the unknown. And what I'm seeing here is an additional survey speed of 25%. If we head over to our tradition tree, is it over here? Is there tradition? How do I get to the tradition tree? Ah, okay, got it. Traditions. So we went with uh, um, discovery, and look to boldly go. That's gonna give me plus thirty-five percent once I when I once I, I get um, three hundred forty-three units. Um, unity, excuse me. And then if we go back. One second, guys. One second. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? I, my my computer my computer just acted up, but can you guys hear me? Okay, I don't know what just happened there. That was really weird. Let, let, give me one second here, guys. My headset disconnected, so let me let me reconnect. Uh, one second, guys. Um, for some reason, my headset just disconnected, so I, I gotta try to connect it. All right, so I'm going to disable this Bluetooth here. Okay, and can I reconnect this? Okay, that, that's really weird. So uh, as long as you, you, you guys can hear what, you know, can you hear my voice and can you hear the in-game music as well? <laughs> okay, excellent. Yeah, well, for some reason, my headset just kind of crapped out. So I I'm not getting any end game sound right now and my headset doesn't want to connect but as long as you guys can hear that's all that matters okay yeah my headset won't connect Okay, anyways, understood. Let, let's go... Oh, crap. Let's go back to... How do I go back to the... Is it Empire? Nope. How do I go back to that screen? How do we go back to the, is it government? Oh, okay, here it is. Okay, guys, I found it. So 
Um, what, Nara, do you want to be the Minister of Defense? Uh, go back to edicts. Nope, not here. Um, uh, okay. Uh, government. Here. And then I'm going to go chart the unknown. I'm going to go with this, guys, because it's going to give me plus 25 survey speed. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to progress made towards the current agenda will be lost. Oh. What's our current agenda? Infinite opportunities. Oh, that's giving us pop happiness plus four. I see. Nara says yes. Okay. Well, guys, let's let's switch the infinite opportunities to chart the unknown. Because I really want I really want to unlock the survey speed. And that's gonna help Marietta survey the star system here. Okay. Well, not soul, but she is in over here. So I'm gonna click this agenda. And that's reflected there. Okay, excellent. And so that's how we do that. What's this? Launch early. Oh, okay. And then we open up the edicts. So let's head over to the edicts. And so we have policies and edicts here. Guys, we have less than 20 minutes left in the episode here. We'll do three hours today. It will take time to take effect. Okay, sure. Oh, yeah, wait, wait. We need to go back to the government and. How do I rename this admiral? Probably not in here. Isn't he the admiral of my fleet here? Ah, yes, right here. Oh, wow. Man, he's, he's part of the council, but he actually is in the field. Like, he's going to par participate in the battle, if there is ever one. Um, can I rename him, though? Here we go. And um, so, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard, Nara. Welcome aboard. Uh, you are the admiral, so make me proud. <laughs> Minister of Defense, congratulations. And um, yeah, welcome aboard. Now let's head back to the government. And um, Mr. Minister of Defense, Nara, and um, yeah, Marietta Finley. Head, uh, head of research and let's let's head back to edicts guys don't worry too much about them oh ian trust me i'm gonna worry about them i'm gonna worry about them um how, how dare you say that about nara and marietta todd says yes bow not side failed us all Well, chancellors should get seven more basic Corvettes queued up. Okay. <laughs> Todd was singing. Okay, Todd, you weirdo. Um, <laughs> um, okay, fortify border. Oh, this takes unity. We have 92 unity. Edicts fund. Okay. So fortify border, starbase upgrade speed plus 50, starbase capacity plus two. Wow. That's pretty good, guys. I mean, that is, we have a starbase around Seoul. We have a starbase. Can I move this? No. Um, so I have a star base right here. 
And this upgrade speed is plus 50, and then it's going to give me starbase capacity of two and we have a current starbase capacity of three so it'd give me a starbase capacity of five okay interesting let's see what these edicts are encourage political thought until cancelled um okay so this edict encouraged the populace to openly discuss political matters even if the path taken may lead to lead them astray oof oof i don't know about that ethics shift chance plus 100 <laughs> okay um yeah i'm not sure about that that's pretty gray and then map the stars as this edict will push for further galactic exploration to bring light to the darkness and find the wonders lie beyond okay excellent effects until cancelled. Okay. Survey speed 25%. There it is, guys. There it is. 25%. Anomaly discovery chance plus 10%. Ship hyperlane detection range plus 100%. Let's do Matt the Stars, guys. You really can't afford them. Why not? I, I got 15, I get 92 Unity. Is there a monthly cost to this? It costs 15. Upkeep 15. And I have a total upkeep of 39. So of course I can afford this, Ian. I can afford this. And we need to give Marietta every help Everything she, you know, we need to give her all of the to tools to accomplish her job. Yes, Ian, I, maybe I said that wrong, but the upkeep is negative 15. So if I select this, then that's going to take away 15 unity right now. Is that correct? So 39 minus 15, that's what I'm going to, to get. Right? Is that correct? So I, I should have 24 unity left over. I should have plus 24 unity. So I'm going to hit map the stars. Okay. And then we have policies. We have policies and wow, wow, diplomatic stance, expansionist, war philosophy, unrestricted wars. Okay, excellent. That will protect. Yeah, yeah, okay. Subjugation war terms, balance. Ordal Bombardment, wow. Okay, this is really interesting. Purge, slavery. Wow, those are all prohibited. Prohibited. Purge. Wait, we can purge? We can have slavery? Population controls? Prohibited. Robotic workers? Allowed. Trade policies? Wealth creation? Economic policies? Mixed economy? Initial border status? Open. Okay. Um, first contact protocol, proactive, resettlement, prohibited, orbital, surrender, acceptance, allowed. Yeah, no slaves. Yeah, no slaves are, are, are allowed in this empire. Absolutely not. Um, purge, that's, that's slightly disturbing, guys, that there's purge in this game. And slavery. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, okay. Well, we we we'll just briefly we just briefly went over this. Um, we have six minutes left in the episode. Um, Ian is saying yummies. That's slightly making me nervous. Um, but uh, okay, okay. I, I'm gonna close this out here.
And let's policies tabs covers government policies as well as empire wide edicts practices that can be enforced by spending some of our resources. There are often several stances to make on a given policy, although they may be limited to our technology or ethics. Edicts have the monthly upkeep costs either afforded by our edict fund paid with unity. Yep, I understand that. Or at times other resources. Understood. Okay. Um, unpause. Okay. And, um, so we are in the soul system and we're currently placing up a mining station around Jupiter to, to harvest the energy credits. And then it's going to go down to Callisto to get the two minerals. And then over here. We have Marietta and Aldarion, and she is surveying these planets. Okay, so she's going, where's she going? Okay, so she's surveying the small planet here. So very cool. Ian says, not a lot happens at the start. You can speed up to normal. Okay normal speed okay what do we have here the discovery of alien life okay and um go to okay oh okay right here excellent so let's read this the uns hawking has made a startling find on aldarian the moon is teeming with alien life oh, wow guys the first time in history we have encountered life forms that did not originate originate on Earth. Wow, this is exciting times. Very exciting times, guys. It appears that we have found and encountered life on Alderaan for the very first time. This is amazing. A discovery that has silenced those who believed we were alone in the universe. Yeah, I hope you weren't one of those people. Although none of the alien creatures found on Aldarian are sapient. Oh, come on, really? So we just find we just found like um Omeba like Mebas or whatever. Oh, that's too bad. Although none of these alien creatures found are, you know, sapient, it is likely only a matter of time before we encounter beings that are dot dot dot. Uh oh. We may need to be we may not be alone out here. Society gained 310. Oh, nice. Very nice. Guys, there's life out here, but they're not sapient, unfortunately. Okay. Thank you, Marietta. And she's going to go to the next planet. And in the meantime, we can see how the construction is working. Um, does he have the miner up? Ah, yes, he built a miner, a mining station. So now we are extracting the energy credits. Very nice. And what's this? Contact report planetary. All right. The, the United Nations of Earth is abuzz with news of alien life that was found. While, while hardly intelligent by human standards, the fascinating beings defy easy classification and hint at the immense complexity and possibilities of the universe. Oh, wow. How exciting. How exciting. Way to go, Marietta. Way to go, Marietta. You're doing such a wonderful job. Yeah, humans are intelligent. Yeah, we're sapient. But uh, we haven't found anything as far as intelligence on the sapient level. We're, we're just finding like germs and stuff like that. Cells. I don't know. The, the biological soups. Oh, let's pause the game. 
and we have traditions available. And oh yeah, look at this, guys. We have 350 unity, so we can unlock to boldly go, which is why I adopted the discovery. Um, yeah, this is a new age of exploration upon us, guys. And um, as we mapped the surface of our homeworld, we must now brave new terrain. There's a galaxy full of wonders, yes. And we're going to give Marietta another plus 35 survey speed. So she's going to be surveying everything really quickly. So I'm going to adopt this. Are we sure we wish to adopt boldly go? Yes, Marietta, boldly go. Okay, and then we can close this, and then we need to wait for another 448. Okay, and then unpause. And, uh, yeah. Excellent. Oh, look. What did we find in here? Oh, guys, look at this. Two physics research over... Aldarian. Wow. What's this? What's this? The Irasian Concordat. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. We'll just call it the ASEAN Concordat. We have recovered an artifact from an ancient alien civil civilization on Alderan 3, Alderian 3. From what we have translated so far of their language, we have learned that these aliens called themselves the, the, the you know, that name. They were an interstellar power that held sway over the region of the galaxy a little over a million years ago. Oh, wow. And apparently they're in this star system. That's crazy. They appear to have been six-limbed mammalians. Wow. Have you guys ever seen a six-limb mammalian? I haven't. But that, that sounds kind of freaky. And uh, th there are several references to some sort of plague called the... Well, just the, the Jav Pox, wow, which swept across their empire with devastating results, possibly leading to their extinctions. Wow, that's really sad. That's really sad. Okay, guys. Interesting. Begins the precursor of the... Hmm, the... I don't even know how to pronounce that, guys. Tough, tough words to pronounce, but it's um, it's a precursor, and it's a event chain. I'll have to Google this name so I can properly say it because it is part of the playthrough. So, yep, interesting. O okay, and um. So yeah, Marietta is on the third star. Or Jeff. Hey, Todd. Hey, Yanko. Yeah, I'm about to end the episode here. We've been at it for three hours. The human xenologists are practically falling over themselves to publish their takes on the recent findings of alien life. Well, Marietta, you better get... You better get your xenologist under control, because... <laughs> the fevered storm in the scientific community has had some negative yet temporary impact on pursuit in other fields. Okay, uh-oh. Remarkable, yes. Okay. And first contact protocol. Wow, there's a lot happening here. Our recent encounter 
with alien life forms have reignited and made suddenly more urgent. The old debate on how we should approach contacting any potentially intelligent alien civilization we may meet. While some advocate focus on establishing friendly relations as quickly as possibly by contacting them with a message of peace, others advise caution, pointing out that we cannot know whether alien minds bear ill intent towards us and that it would be unwise to let them know too much about us before it's necessary. Yeah, so we shall greet the Xenos with open arms. It is wise to be cautious. Yes. First contact protocol is set to cautious. This policy has the following effect. Cannot attack neutral entities. Other nations will find it harder to establish communication with us. Negative first contact events are less likely to happen to us. First contact target difficulty plus two. Well, guys, it's definitely wise to be cautious. We don't know what's out there in the void. So I'm going to go with this option. Although we love aliens, we, we love it, aliens. We still need to be wise and be cautious. I am... Yeah, Ian, I am a xenophile. I am. But we are humans. And we, we kill our own species. So <laughs> we, we need to be cautious. I'm going at the cautious stance. I mean, we are fanatic egalitarians. And a zeo, xenophile. We shall greet the xeno with open arms. Well, gain 50% more influence with each successful first contact process. I'm not sure what that is, but it sounds interesting. Well, let's be cautious, Ian. Let's be cautious. <laughs> yeah, Todd. Uh, so open arms, but with the Xeno Zapper in each hand. Well, influence allows you to, to expand. Fair, fair enough. Okay. I mean, okay, let's, I'm, I, you know, I, I like to be cautious, but we shall greet Xenos with open arms. I mean, what if we encounter a bad, bad Xeno, though? Do we want to open them? I, I'm I, no, I'm going with this one. I'm going with that one. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> um, guys. I want to pause the game here. Wow. Guys, that's the that's the episode today. Episode number one for Stellaris. Um, first impressions, and uh it's a it's a very overwhelming. I don't know what's really going on here. But we went over a lot of things in today's episode. We went over a lot of things in today's episode. If, if we go out to the galaxy, I, I, it's just so much we, we went over. We, we, we went over the top navigation that uh, goes over all of our resources and rare resources. A lot of stuff. We went over the outliner. We went over some of the things over here. Situation log, the government, society management, technologies. Um, yeah, we, we unlocked or we went through the galaxy map. We, we learned how to set up some research and miner stations. And it appears like we are mining and researching everything in the Sol Star system. We got everything, I think. Um, so we're all set in the Sol system. And now we, we, we've learned about hyperlanes. 
And these hyperlanes are connected to other star systems that are connected to the solar system. And we can use our science ship to head over to these star systems to survey these planetary bodies and hopefully unlock hidden things in here. Like, for instance, we found two physics research at this star here. And look, we found two more here. And so Marietta is in the science vessel unlocking a bunch of things, revealing a bunch of secret things in the star system. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, there's two potentially habitable, ha habitable planets in here. So uh, we, we did even more than that, guys. There's just so much. I can't even go over it all. Um, but yeah, yeah, yes, guys, that is the episode. That is the episode. We'll continue in episode number two. We'll continue in episode number two, guys. I appreciate you guys stopping by today. If, if you do enjoy this, this game and this playthrough, show me by hitting that like button and um, we'll, we'll see what happens with this series. But uh, my first impressions are very complicated, very complicated, but I like what I see so far. I'm enjoying myself. So Ian, thank you. Nara, thank you. Marietta, Todd, thank you all for stopping by. I appreciate you guys. And uh, I appreciate it. Thank you, Ian and Nara. Yeah, we're going to dive deep into this. And let's hope, let's hope the series gets some attraction. But you guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend there, wherever you are on planet Earth. And we'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye.